started off the trip in British Columbia, we went and visited the Parliament in Victoria. And that was quite an interesting opportunity to see how it works at a provincial level compared to the federal level. And we had a range of meetings there. Agriculture was probably the highlight for me from my background in the Waikato. We had many long and in-depth conversations on topics like euthanasia and legalisation of cannabis, uh, tourism, state of the economy, all sorts. The two meetings that really stuck in my mind was what they're doing in terms of their housing crisis, in terms of providing um, what the state is doing to be able to uh, deal with homelessness. And I think there's a lot of issues that we could learn from in that space. And secondly, their equivalent of the Office of Treaty Settlements in terms of the treaty process they're going to was also fascinating to find out what First Nations are going through. We had really, really interesting meetings around housing and how they're responding to their housing crisis there and that their Crown Agency was working with communities to support them to be able to provide social housing and really putting a lot of time and resource into that. After we'd been in Victoria we went to Vancouver and we had a day there looking at uh, sustainable housing in particular and it was interesting to note some of the focus they were trying to address there, some of the similar challenges again that they have to what we have in relation to uh, housing people, affordability of housing. What was really great about the trip is we visited a state parliament and then also their main parliament which is based in Ottawa. It was awesome to attend Question Time in Canada. Uh, they have 350 MPs which is about three times the amount of MPs we've got here. And we got to see the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau answer questions in English and French which was very impressive and to also see the, all the politics playing out. And it was interesting to note the differences in their question time compared to our question time in New Zealand. Uh, still quite enthusiastic, certainly plenty of uh, vocal opinions across the house but just a slightly different take on, on how that operates in a different country. I'm really grateful for the way in which the New Zealand's High Commissioner in Canada and his Deputy High Commissioner were so incredibly helpful and knowledgeable for us. It's really interesting to see the level of respect that they have over there. So isn't that awesome for us in New Zealand that we get to know, sitting back here, that our reps over there are continuously selling the New Zealand story in a really genuine manner. The highlight of the trip for me was meeting the Canadian Minister of Tourism, uh, Minister Jolly. It was amazing to see just how similar the issues they have, uh, the issues they're facing in Canada, um, which we are here in New Zealand. You know, how do we manage sustainably uh, the number of people that want to visit New Zealand and most importantly, uh, give them the best experience possible. We had a great trip uh, north out of Ottawa to go and look at one of the First Nations groups and looking at how they've operated over there and some of the challenges they've faced. To see the community coming together and providing their own education system and social services. For me as a Pakia in government, it's really useful and important to reflect on that commonality and self-determination and well-being and freedom and rights of Indigenous people. Another meeting that I felt was really interesting was meeting with Randy Boissonneau, who was the very first uh, special advisor appointed to the Prime Minister on LBGT um, issues in Canada and he was really spearheading the conversations around mental health and youth and the importance of having a spokesperson in that area. The title in Canada used is LBGTQ2 and I asked what did 2 mean and it was a reflection of the First Nations interpretation of someone being too spirited, having two spirits within them and it's the first time I'd heard that. Another highlight was meeting the Climate Ambassador for Canada, uh, fascinating to hear uh, how they're sort of dealing with their issues around climate change. Uh, very topical at the moment here in New Zealand as we're going through similar experiences. One of the things that we had to come across and actually really sad were massive floods in the city of Ottawa. Snow hadn't long melted and actually they were experiencing the worst flooding that they've ever had. So we certainly um, were able to extend our thoughts to uh, the MPs dealing with those challenging situations over there and of course the people directly impacted. Just seeing how Canada's dealing with the same issues that we've got here as a country New Zealand's very similar to Canada. They are going through issues that we are going through right now, euthanasia, cannabis, just to name two. Then we've got CPTPP, 
where we're hoping to do some more bilateral trade with Canada. These are massive issues for our country, for Parliament and for our economy. I really enjoyed being part of a team that was cross-party going overseas. I felt proud to represent New Zealand and it really gave me a great understanding of the similarities that New Zealand has with Canada. You know, it's kind of a cliche about think globally, act locally, but there's a value in that and that was clearer, even clearer to me after this trip. I don't think you have two countries that are so similar in the world. These sorts of trips are so important to ensure that we maintain strong connections with our similar countries uh, internationally because those strong connections are so important when it comes to a whole range of aspects such as trade and security, international relations, foreign affairs and we need to ensure that we're doing our best to maintain those where we can. This delegation has come to